Right, for this month's crash course, we're here with Daryl Peck and we're looking at a seriously new edge in the Corder Armoury. But before we do, it's been a little while since we've seen you, mate. Have yeah, it's been a little while. What have you been up to? Um, I haven't been doing so much fishing. Um, this year I've been mainly writing my book, and uh, so that's been taking up a lot more time. And uh, I've recently started working for Corder, as we like, obviously before I was a consultant, but now I'm um, in the marketing department doing, going to tackle shops, doing open days, like demonstrating the products in fish tanks and just answering general queries about carp fishing. Um, and I'm not really there to sell the product. My sort of role is to um, educate people how to use it properly. So hopefully that if they do, they go out and catch on it. Hopefully then they continue to buy the product. I mean, it's been nearly a year since we last saw you when you had that awesome fish out of the manor. Yeah. You had a couple of other big ones since then, the Norfolk one. Yeah, the uh, Lenway Charity Fish. Um, it didn't take long, did it? <laughs> didn't take that long. Um, not quite as quick as Terry Earn. <laughs> but um, yeah, I went down there sort of early April, um, caught fairly quickly from the off. It's mainly uh, mid doubles to sort of mid twenties, like the average short size, the stockies and that in there. But um, after twelve nights, so I managed to get the big one as a uh, forty-nine and a half pounds. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, tucker fish. Yeah. Oh well. All right, then, mate. Well, as I say, we're here to look at a new edge from from Corda, and that is these captors. Yeah, they've been um, in sort of development for a very long time. Uh, what we have here is like the finished product, and um, what basically the difference are comp these compared to the old range hooks is, but these ones PTFE coated, but colour colour added to obviously camouflage from the bottom, you get two colours, you get the weed green and the uh, gravel brown. They're done in the uh, wide gate range and the, and the um, curve shank range. Straight away you can see the, the benefits from it, can't you? I mean, yeah. a lot of people who say they've done underwater filming or photography, they say the most blatant thing is often the hook, the hook isn't it? Yeah. You know, sort of shining, particularly when you're fishing in shallow, clear water, you sort of get that reflection, so. The whole hook is coated in this, in this uh, PTFE coating apart from the point. If you imagine a point like that and it's it's finished point, as soon as you put a coating over it, you're adding thickness to the point, so it can't be as sharp as what it would without the coating. Where the bar would be from that bit to the top is not coated, so allowing it to be thinner, more sleeker, and uh, a lot more sharper than what was originally on the old pattern. So it's going to slip that in that much easier? Yeah, than more sticky, you just sort of catch hold to start with, and obviously once it goes past that point, it's in, you know? Right, so you do them in the, um, the wide gapes and the curved shanks? Yeah, they're the most popular patterns that Corda do. The curved shanks are sort of really good for the KD rig and the uh, muzzle rig that's been made quite famous in the magazines. My personal favourites are the wide gapes, especially when using like a soft braided hook link. I don't think you can beat them to like hook to land ratio. That's what I rely on in my big fish angling. Excellent. Well, do you want to um, tie one of your rigs up? Yep, one of my simple specials. <laughs> Take it anywhere. I love yep. your rigs, Darrell. <laughs> I believe that the, um, the hook is the most important part of any rig, you know, that's the bit that converts, converts bites into takes because at the end of the day, in every other type of fishing, you use a float or whatever and uh, you set the hook by striking at a bite. We're in carp fishing, we rely on the lead to set the hook, so the hook point is the most valuable thing you've got, like, so paying attention to that will catch you extra fish, there's no doubt about that. I've got some uh, supernatural braid here, I've got the uh, 18 pound weed green, just tie a very basic loop overhand knot for the uh, hair stop, just like so. I like the knot to sit inside the bait so the bait doesn't slide back and up and down like the hair itself. Tighten that, just give it a little tug on your pair of scissors. Trim off the excess tag that you don't need, nice and neat and tidy. Then I always, a lot of people don't do this, they tie the rigs like freehand and guess the length of the hair. I think it's vitally important if you want to get your rigs consistent is to tie it with the bait on so that if you lose fish, you can alter things and get it right. And I've always found, especially with wide gates in the sort of patterns that I use, that if the hair exits level with the point and that the, the boilie just brushes to the bottom of the bend, then I don't get hook pulls, I don't suffer that at all. But um, a lot of people can tie a knot that's not wrong, you know, and lose fish because they're not doing it accurately each time and don't understand why. So I'll show you how I do it. Thread the boilie onto the loop, like so. Like that. Take a little hair stop. Sorry. So there's like two different shades as well, you've got the green and the brown. Yeah, green and brown to suit whatever lake bed you're on. You know the uh, brown's really good for gravel. But the thing is they're both probably really good for silt as well. They're both they're both dull colours, you know, very neutral and just blend in, you know. And I think it's quite important as well to balance your uh, hook size to your bait size. So we've got a 15, 14 mil boiler here, so I'm gonna go over a size eight, which I've always found to be about right. Take the uh, little rubber cap that protects the hook point, keeping it in a tip-top condition. Vitally important the knot does not always go through the back of the eye. It's amazing how many people I still see going through the other eye and just don't even think about it, you know, but until you've been shown, obviously, it's an easy mistake to make. Like I say, I bring the boilie up, just, just level with the bottom of the bend there, so it's a little bit of clearance, and then by holding the boilie and holding the hook by finger and thumb like so, I've 
trap the hair length, it's going to stay the same. Always wind on the side of the hook where the uh, eye doesn't close, because obviously if it pulls tight on the side it closes, it could damage the hook link. So always first turn against the round side. So I don't count the turns. I just, with braid I wind down, just wind down the shank like so. Not on top of each, always like the next turn down, make sure it doesn't loop over itself. Go down. To allow for tightening, I go just past the point. So probably just, just above where the barb would be. This is a barber's one. Yep. Through the back of the eye again. Always the back. Pull it tight, and if you say as I tighten the knot up, it will move up. And that's now just a little bit below the point, so I twist the knot a little bit. And now that is absolutely spot on. Boily, hair exactly where I wanted it. Exiting exactly on the middle of the shank, important. You know, in the middle, opposite the, the uh, point across here. You don't want it hanging off the side of the hook, you want it there. Right. And obviously, what happens, obviously, the fish picks up the bait, because that's what it's after. If you just look, the hook is already hanging in the right position just by picking up the bait here. So just by tying the knot correctly and getting the hair length right. I don't use shrink tube, but there's definitely a place for it, you know, for turning hooks to make it turn. But I don't rely on this sort of factor. I um, believe that carp pick up the bait, turn left or right, and I usually get them in the side of the mouth. So a lot of people say go for the bottom of the lip, and if you want to achieve that, then shrink tube's definite, a definite edge. But I always like to think less is more, less on my rigs, less room at sea, and uh, it's very inconspicuous. I generally would tie this about about six to eight inches if I get a swivel. I always use a four turn grin or not. I only go uh, once through the eye because I've never found the need for it twice through the eye. Pull it up for about, say I want it seven inches. I'll start at about five or six like that to allow for the tightening of the knot. Make a loop that's parallel to the hook link and go through the loop four times. One, two, three, four. A little bit of saliva and then that will just slide up and extend to the length that I want, which is, like I say, about seven inches. Although it looks very simple, you could take that anywhere and you can catch any fish on a rig like that. Well, recently, um, you know, you've done really well at Gigantic, did not you? Yep, over there I was fishing at quite long range, so I was using um, a shock leader to light line. And because of this reason, I couldn't use my other faithful. I always use um, inline leads. I probably sh I showed this last time that was on Carp TV. Um, inline leads don't pass over a shock leader not so well, so I had to drop that. I used a hybrid leg clip with um, a little bit of a uh, gravel tubing about this sort of length. It was just basically two inches longer than the rig. Right. If you use any tangle tubing, it has to be just a little bit longer than the rig. Um, three and a half ounce distance leads with a little silicon sleeve over the swivel to keep it all neat and tidy. And a tail rubber over the uh, hybrid leg clip. And uh, yeah, Brady took link much the same as what I've just shown here. A little bit larger scale. I was using the uh, size six barbless and uh, 18, 20 mil boily. That was again balancing your hook size to your boily size. And uh, yeah, I, after I changed that setup, because I did I had a couple of hook pulls on size eights, and then I moved up to the size six, and then I landed 22 out of 23 bites on barbless hooks. So it just proves that if your rigs tie consistently well, then it will uh, land the fish that you're after, you know what I mean? Because uh, there haven't been many other bites around the lake, have there, in that time? Um, <laughs> you battered them, didn't you, mate? I've <laughs> I done really well, you know. I was quite lucky. Tom had been in the swim the week before me, uh, already got the, the area rocking. He had. Um, I think he landed nine fish out of 12 takes in a week. And then um, I got in there myself and had 25 takes in five days. So awesome. yeah, it was pretty good going. And a good yeah. amount of big ones in there as well? Uh, I had a 47, a 46, and uh, quite a few 30s as well. Yeah, so it was a good week. Back of stuff. Yeah, not quite as good as Ali though, with a 70 pound eight on his first bite, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? <laughs> okay, look, not only are they sharper, the new captors that we have here, um, the old ones here are standing out much more brightly and they, uh, in their day, and uh, still to this day, are better than original hooks for camouflage on the bottom. You can clearly see here the coloured uh, PTFE coating on the new captors is definitely blending in with the lake bed better and that, that can only increase your chances of fish. And uh, as you can see here, we were looking in like two inches of water, but if you imagine four, five, six foot, the, the darker and murky it gets, they're going to be even more camouflaged and uh, like I say, it's only going to increase your chances of catching more fish. Thank you.